shape that has four sides. But those four sides can come in many different varieties. Let's go over five different categories. We have rectangle, parallelogram, square, rhombus, and trapezoid. I gotta get out of here. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. Because it has four right angles, its opposite sides are parallel and its adjacent sides are perpendicular to one another. And look at this. If we take our rectangle and scrunch it to one side, we get a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has opposite sides parallel. Now its angles are no longer right angles, but its opposite sides are all still parallel. It also has two congruent pairs of supplementary a square angles. square is a rectangle whose four sides are congruent. So a square has right angles, parallel sides, and congruent sides. A square is a form of rhombus. A rhombus is any quadrilateral with four congruent parallel sides. And by the way, the plural form of rhombus is rhombi, just like a cactus. One cactus, two cacti. One rhombus, two rhombi. And now, back to our program. There's one more shape. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with only one pair of parallel sides. In this trapezoid, segments AB and DC are parallel. These five categories of shapes with parallelograms because the parallelogram category contains not just parallelograms but also rectangles, squares, and rhombi. Think about it. Parallelograms have opposite sides parallel and that's also true of rectangles, squares, and rhombi. So all rectangles, squares, and rhombi are also parallelograms. But not all parallelograms are either a rectangle, square, or rhombus. You got it? There are some key theorems regarding parallelograms that we've got for you. We'll look at these theorems about parallelograms so we can see how our earlier parallel line and triangle theorems can be used with other shapes. Theorem. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Let's prove it. Given that ABCD is a parallelogram, prove that segments AB and CD are congruent and segments AD and BC are congruent. It's to state our, our given information. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Now we need to set up some triangles. So we draw diagonal B, D as our second step. Our reason is, through any two points there is exactly one line. Now we have two triangles, A, B, D and C, D, B. Next, we'll say that A, B is parallel to C, D and A, D is parallel to B, C. Why? Because this is the definition of a parallelogram. Now we have parallel lines and a transversal going on, and we can really figure out some angle correspondences. For our fourth step, we'll state that to angle 2, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, thanks to the alternate interior angle theorem. So, for our fifth step, we'll use the ever-so-handy reflexive property to set BD congruent to itself. Now we have two pairs of congruent angles established. We can use the angle-side-angle -angle postulate if we can show that the included sides are congruent. This is simple because side BD is shared by both triangles. Now we can use the angle side angle postulate to say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. Since the two triangles we can state in step that AB is congruent to CD congruent and to BC. Why? Because of CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. See? AB and CD correspond, as do DA and BC. So they're congruent, and we've proven our theorem. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. 